I'm sure people are going to make fun of me over this video. My local used bookstore also sells used toys. And they actually had this for $3. And my favorite shape in the world is the hyperboloid. Or the hourglass shape. And here you can see a double hourglass shape of strands along which are spun strung gold and silver beads. Um, everything's the right hand rule. It's like a perfect example. I couldn't pass it up for $3 since everything's the right hand rule. As we actually, like the gold beads make their way to the top, as soon as they reach the right hand rule to acceleration or what you would conventionally call gravity, they accelerate towards the lowest pressure mediation. And it is a neat toy. I mean, it is $3, you know? It's not like I buy toys. Huh? But um, importantly, if I were to actually change the pressure mediation and also change, and this would be like an electrical example, the right-hand rule to acceleration. Right-hand rule acceleration, if I actually increase it, would be right-hand to acceleration, which is this way. So 90 degrees to that would be this way. And so I could change that instead of doing this. I actually increase the right-hand rule to where this acceleration, conventionally called gravity, is amplified this way. So instead of this, I will get this, right? And I let go. Everything returns to proper pressure mediation. Um, everything is the right hand rule. Absolutely everything, because actually as they approach the top here, they will follow acceleration down the slope as they should. This is also the reason why, and I get this question asked all the time, when people buy a really powerful magnet, they actually have a very, very shallow field. People think they got a cheap magnet. It's like the field isn't as big around this really powerful magnet as, against, as it is compared to my weaker magnet. This would be uh, an example of a really powerful magnet where dielectric acceleration of the plane of inertia being here along the hyperboloid. This would be an example of a really powerful magnet where you have a decent magnetic field, but acceleration overtakes magnetic divergence. This would be an example of a weaker magnet, which is contrary to people's convention. A weaker magnet have, should have a stronger magnetic field. It's just the opposite. A weaker magnet will actually have a larger voluminous magnetic field, which would be something akin to this. Not exactly this, but it would be like this, where it has actually a larger magnetic field and less dielectric acceleration on a less powerful magnet. But a stronger magnet will have stronger dielectric acceleration in a smaller voluminous or magnitudinal magnetic field. That's because people don't think in terms of space. This would be space and this would be counter space. People don't think in terms of space versus counter space. The center of this, of course, would be counter space. The outside edges of this would be, of course, space or spatial. Space is not a thing. Space has no properties, only attributes. But magnetism is synonymous with space since magnetism is that which creates space. The only thing that space and time are responsible for their existence is space and time would be the children. Magnetism would be the father and the mother, if you will. Well, actually, the mother would be uh, dielectricity since magnetism is a dielectric field. But anyway, everything is the right-hand rule. Capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. That's why I bought this $3 toy, used toy. Uh, not because I buy toys. Someone's like, this dude's playing with a toy. No, it's just because it's a really good representation of uh, field geometry and the right-hand rule. It is, it is kind of cool, though. It does serve no purpose other than as a thinking tool. <laughs> Goodbye.